Hello, my name is Paul Miners and welcome back to another one of my pipe drive training videos. Now this video is really intended for sales managers or business owners and I'm going to give you some tips on how you can use pipe drive to keep track of and support your sales team. Now the idea for this video came about as I've recently made some changes in my business and my team are now doing more sales where it was just me before. So my role and my use of pipe drive has changed in the last couple of months. And now I find myself wanting to see how are my team doing and really find how can I support them and what can I do to help them move their deals to the next stage. If you have any questions at the end of this video, feel free to leave me a comment below. And if you would like one-on-one -on -one help with setting up or optimizing pipe drive for your business, maybe you want to automate more of your sales process, then click the link in the description below to learn more about our pipe drive consulting options. Now, one of the first things I would do when managing my sales team, and I would especially do this before I invite anyone into pipe drive, but even if you have already, that's fine. Uh, let's review the team settings and some of the permissions that are set up. So to do that, you're going to come to your um, the drop down menu up here and go to manage users. Now this is an admin permission. So if you're not seeing this option, chances are you're probably not an admin of the account. On this page, we can see all the users currently invited and we can see all of their permissions. This is a very bad idea, by the way. You can see everyone in here is an admin. This is only because this is our demo account, which we use for testing. Normally, I do not recommend having everyone on your team be an admin. Now on the team filters page, if you have the Pipedrive professional plan, you can create teams. This is essentially a way of organizing the users or the salespeople in Pipedrive into different units. So here I've got an Auckland team and a Wellington team. This is useful if you have different sales teams for different regions or possibly different units or, or revenue streams within the business. By setting up teams like this, I can then filter my pipeline. So if I go to my deals here, I can then see in the view options, I can look at all the team, all the deals assigned to either the Auckland team or that Wellington team. And also from a reporting standpoint, if I go to my reports, I can create reports like this that shows me the deals that I've won and it's segmented by team. So I can see which team is performing or which team is doing the best. So this may or may not be relevant to you. A lot of businesses don't really have sales teams as such, but it is a feature that's available if you do want to group your salespeople into different business units. Now, while we're on this uh, manage users tab, I would also check the permission sets and the visibility groups of the, of the users. Now, if you come down to the global features uh, permission sets here, we can check what permissions regular users in the account have. Admins can do everything. So of course you wanna be careful who you give admin permissions to. Most of your users, you're gonna to want to set up as regular users. And we actually do that over here. I can pick a user, I can um, edit their access rights. And instead of making them an admin, I can make them a regular user for deals. And also global, I would make them a global regular user. And so now I can change the permissions for those regular users. I can decide what types of things do I want to let them do. Now, I'm not gonna go through all of these here, but a couple of key things to just point out. Firstly, I, I think it's a good idea not to let people delete custom fields um, or set up new labels because you can have people creating too many fields and labels. It can get quite messy. You probably don't want to allow people to export data as well. Um, and then there's some other features about like um, deleting people, merging people, deleting organizations, merging organizations. And also if we go to our deal regular users section, I would also turn off deleting deals as well. We probably don't want to give people permission to just delete data and change critical information like when a deal was won and lost. So. I would recommend going through these settings here, go through global regular users and deal regular users, and just check that you're giving the team the permissions that you are comfortable with. Once you're happy with those permissions, I would also go over to the visibility groups tab here. And this is where you can customize how much visibility do we want to give people of the different deals, people, and organizations in the account. You can set up custom visibility groups here. So as you can see, I've got one called sales reps. I've added my sales team to this particular group. And on the right, 
you can set what is the default visibility for leads, deals, people, organizations, or even products that these users create. So you can see the way it's set up at the moment is if one of these users on the sales team creates a new person, that person is going to be visible to all users in the company. Now I can choose to make items visible only to the item owner. owner. So just that person that created the person, only that person, as well as admins, of course, can see that person. You can also set up permissions or visibility so that other people in the same group can also see those people or people in the same group and subgroups can see those people. So we have these different layers of visibility that we can apply. Uh, and so I would just recommend again, reviewing these settings, make sure that if somebody in this group creates a person or a deal, do we want to allow other people to see those deals? Some of the clients that we've worked with say, you know, we only want to let people see the deals that they're working on. So you can say, if my sales team create a deal, it's only available or only visible to that person. The other people on the team can't see that deal. Whereas with contacts like people, we might want to make those visible to everyone. Now, if you want to see a more detailed video about how to set up the visibility groups and permission sets, I'm going to link up here a video I made about a year ago that explains some of this in a bit more detail. So now that we've looked at those settings and permissions and kind of the boring stuff is out of the way, let me share some actual tips on what I do to check up on my team and support them during their sales process. Now, what I do is I do almost like a weekly review of each person's sales pipeline. So from the deals page here, I'll change my view options and I'll go to one of the salespeople on my team, like Lindsay, and I'll pick some deals to have a look at. I generally focus on deals that are in the later stages of their pipeline here. And this is just our demo account, so there's not a lot going on in here. But I'll open some of these like this Bill Gates deal. And I'll literally read through the deal to see what has Lindsay done recently, what's her next action, and where is this deal at? Now, a couple of things to help with this. Firstly, you can see I can see all of the back and forth emails on this deal. So I make sure if I go to my email preferences here under your personal preferences and then email sync, you can specify, do you want emails that you sync with Pipedrive to be shared or private? And I've instructed my team, make your emails shared. And this means I can see the emails they've exchanged back and forth. And this is a great way of um, just kind of reading what's their follow up like, how are they addressing any sales resistance or objections. I will also look back at the activities that they've completed. So I can see here, this was a call completed by Lindsay, discussed project goals. So another best practice that I get my team to follow is if they do call, I've told them, write your notes and put a bit of a summary of what you discussed on that call into the activity. So I can see, right, discuss project goals or whatever it might be. Lindsay's also added a note summarizing Bill's requirements. So I can read through that. On the left-hand side here, I can see a nice summary of the deal. I can look at the value and the product, so I can see specifically what has my team quoted or what product or service are we pitching to this person. I can see the percentage probability and the expected close date that they've assigned. So this is our forecast of when they think they're gonna win the deal. I also like to check the custom fields and make sure my team has filled out all the important information about the deal. For instance, we have a summary like this, target start date, deal type, other tracking information like this. So I'm checking, have they filled everything out? And what I'm really doing by reading the, the notes, the emails, the summary here, is I'm just trying to get a sense of where is this deal at and how good of an opportunity is this? Once I'm ready to actually provide some feedback or support my team, we rely heavily on these notes here. So I will say at Lindsay, so I'll at mention Lindsay, I'll say something like, um, looks like, a good deal. Make sure you follow up with a call this week and offer a demo. So I can give some uh, some clear instruction on what, on what I think she should do next. And I'll save that activity. And because I've at mentioned Lindsay, Lindsay is going to get a notification in her sales inbox here. And also she'll get an email if she has those notification settings turned on. Lindsay can then respond in the comments. And what we often do is we'll go back and forth. Sometimes my team will even reach out to me and they'll at mention me and say, you know, can you please review this quote or proposal or how would you handle this objection? 
So we actually keep all of our communication inside the deal. This is really nice because rather than communicating via email or something like Slack, it means that whenever Lindsay or I look at this deal again, we can clearly see the notes and we can see the back and forth conversation right inside the deal. And we're not having to switch to a separate tool to go and see that conversation. While I'm on the deal page, the other thing I'm doing, and this is probably the one of the most important things, is I'm checking, have they scheduled a next activity? Do they have some kind of activity reminding them to follow up next? So I can see here this email is scheduled for today. Lindsay is going to be following up today uh, just to, I guess, see how they're doing, to see if they're ready to proceed. What I'm checking for is, do they not? Do they have any activities that are overdue? You know, if I see an activity like this, which is a one week overdue, this is an indicator to me that uh, Lindsay is dropping the ball. This leader's or opportunity is falling through the cracks. So I would then at mention her and say, Lindsay, you know, make sure you follow up on this. So I'm checking: do they have an activity scheduled, and is it or is it not overdue? So I'm: are they keeping up? This is also really to see from the deal page. If I go back to my deals, I can see a little red indicator on the deal here if there is an overdue activity, or I can see the li little yellow warning triangle if there are deals with no activity scheduled. So that's a quick little thing I might look for to check, are they keeping up or are they falling behind? Something else I like to do to support my team is to give uh, email templates that they can use to try different scripts and to use different language when following up. So if I go over to my uh, actual live account here, here's an example deal. And if I click on the email tab, I can compose an email from here. Uh, but if I go to choose template and then manage templates, this is where we've set up all sorts of different sales templates. And I will often um, come in here and create new templates uh, to give my team ideas of scripts and things they can try to help close the deal. So here's one of our one of the ones we send. Um, sometimes maybe if somebody is not responding to your follow-ups, we send a very simple email like this. I've tried following up a few times, but I haven't heard back. Where should we go from here? I've also created templates for things like this. If we're sending a summary email, which summarizes the details of our support program, uh, here's a pretty detailed email with links to sign up. And I've got instructions that they need to personalize this list. They need to choose one of these options uh, down here as well. So I've set up this template with all the language and how I like to phrase things. Clear, clear call to action, links ready to proceed. And so I can set this up and my team just need to choose the appropriate templates. Of course, they can tweak the actual email before they send it, but that's a really nice way that I can just uh, kind of share nice scripts and language with my team to use. And finally, of course, what I want to see at the end of the day is how is my team performing? Who's doing well and who maybe needs some help? So under the insights tab here, I've actually got a separate dashboard called team performance with a couple of reports specifically for measuring the performance of my team. Uh, and by the way, I've got a, another video you can go and look, which I'll link up here. If you do want to learn about creating dashboards and creating reports in Pipedrive, go and check out that video. But that allows me to create reports like this. So I've got here a report showing deals one, and I'm just looking at last year, segmented by owner so I can see which users on my team are winning the most deals and the total revenue contributed by everyone. I can also do reports of the activities uh, completed by my team. So I can see for April this year, the number of calls, emails, and meetings completed as my team complete those activities. And one of the nice things I can do on my dashboard is I can actually filter this dashboard to a particular user like Lindsay. And so now this is Lindsay's activities completed and Lindsay's uh, revenue report. Or I can even have a report like this. I can see my team's conversion rate. So I can see for the users on my team, what is the percentage of wins and losses uh, for that particular user? Again, this is our demo account. So these conversion rates look pretty good, but this is not actually real. So those are some of the tactics I've been using to keep track of and support my sales team using Pipedrive. As a business owner who has always been the sole salesperson for my company, and I'm now giving that responsibility to other people on my team, it can be nerve wracking giving up that control and responsibility and handing that over to somebody else. But having Pipedrive, having visibility of what my team is working on and seeing how they're performing, how good their follow-up is, really gives me confidence and allows me to 
do my job, which is now supporting them. Now, if you'd like help with training your sales team, making sure they use the CRM in the best way, then click the link in the description below to learn more about our Pipedrive consulting options. We've really just scratched the surface today. So if you would like to take that next step with Pipedrive, we look forward to hopefully connecting with you soon. One more time, if you have any questions, please leave me a comment below. Don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to see when new Pipedrive training videos come out. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.